Hey to YouTube, so another masking video. Um, yeah, today we've got this Ford Focus here, new quarter panel obviously. It's been mostly primed up. We've got two brand new doors and a blend on the fender, so pretty straightforward job. I've been on it for most of the day, yeah, since I got here this morning. Locking it all down, I actually sprayed on the insides because it's all been welded, welded a new quarter panel. I just did that quickly before my lunch break. Um, and yeah, got it all prepped up and I actually had this thing ready to come straight into the booth and the key for the car was over on the windscreen and as I reached over to grab it, I looked down here and I actually saw a bit of a kink through here. So um, obviously when the quarter panel was hit or the door must have pushed up into it or something like that. So had a bit of a last minute um, repair I had to do there. I just um, tapped it down with a bit of a rubber mallet and filled it up and Bit of UV primer, UV primer is great for that kind of thing, it dries so quickly. And now that I do have that UV curing light, I can use UV all year round. Previous to having that, it was only really something that we could use um, in summer or on at least on sunny days. So yeah, pretty handy. I guess otherwise it would have been stuck with, well you got the first choice, which would have been maybe a bit of 1K primer, like etch primer or something, put that down and then use some wet on wet primer over the top of that. Or the other option would have been if, if it needed a bit more fill on there, I probably would have had to use two pack primer on it and then put the infrared lights on it. But that probably would have been enough to stop this job from getting painted today. So yeah. Definitely uh, gets used quite a lot. Me and the boys here use that in uh, the UV, sorry, yeah, the UV curing light every single day. Well, just about. It's, it's rare that a day goes by that one of us won't use it. I let the other guys use mine. Yeah, it's a bit of a uh, miserable old day out there, raining and overcast with clouds so nice day to be in a in a spray booth i guess but in saying that it, it's not actually cold it's it's probably only like 15 maybe might even be up to 20 degrees celsius today so it's really not cold i mean coming from melbourne you know uh perth's weather's actually really mild quite nice even in the summer, like, it does get hot, you know, it'll get to 40, um, but it doesn't get to those absolutely blistering hot temperatures like you get um, if you go a little bit further inland or even up north here in Western Australia. Like, I used to work in um, Kalgoorlie, and, you know, that's probably, like, five or six, seven hundred kilometres um, inland from Perth. And man, it gets really hot out there in the summer. You know, like 45 degree days are pretty much the norm in summer there. But yeah, Perth itself, because we're on the on the ocean, seem to get a bit more moderate temperatures or mild, a bit more mild temperatures. You know, like occasionally you will get those sort of 45 degree days, but rarely, really. And you might only get like two or three of them a year. I don't think we had any um, last summer. Not that I recall. But all that aside, yeah, just masking up. Bit of masking here. One of my favorite jobs. <laughs> I don't know why, I just find it relaxing. Chill out, put some bits of tape on. I am kind of in a bit of a hurry today because, yeah, I had a couple of little things that didn't plan, especially that little repair. I was sort of running right on track until I found that last minute little repair that I had to fix. And I'm like, God damn it, man. So yeah, I like to leave at four o'clock. Rather go home and relax for the afternoon. Like back in the day, I used to love smashing out the OT, you know, like to stay till six to get another job done. That didn't bother me. Geez, sometimes I'd, I'd do crazy hours. I think it was like, 20 or so, I was up there, right up there. I think like I'd started at um, like six o'clock in the morning. I didn't finish until like three o'clock or two o'clock um, the next morning. <laughs> yeah, that was when I was doing a bit of work on airplanes. 
And the novel, trust me, the novelty of working on an airplane pretty um, quickly wears off. <laughs> it's like, oh, cool, spraying airplanes. And then, you know, after you do the first one, you're like, yeah, man, give me a car any day. And like, a nice little car, you know. Just everything takes, so, like, you know, you look at a, a, a car and you're like, oh, yeah, you know, I get like two of them done today. Or, you know, for a job like this, it's a little bit bigger. I just, you know, get that one job done for today. Um, whereas you just look at an airplane, oh, we've got to do the wing today, and it's like just nah, you won't even get half of it done, you know, or even prepped, you know, because every now and then um, you have to paint strip them, the airplanes, it's part of their uh, maintenance schedule. So, yeah. Yeah, I do love this trade, I don't know, I just found found a job, I, I was lucky to land into it, a job that I ended up loving and I think I always loved it, even right from the start, I always enjoyed it. I, um, the way I actually got into the trade was, so my uncle and both, uncle and grandpa were spray painters slash panel beaters and I used to live up, up country in Bendigo, which is like two hours north of Melbourne, Australia's, uh, one of Australia's larger cities. And I finished school, did my, finished my year 10. And after that, I, I had a summer job over the summer break. And then that came to an end. So I had to look into, you know, getting another job. And I, I just wanted an apprenticeship. I was looking for an apprenticeship. Um, didn't really find anyone to put me on at the start. So I took on, uh, I, I went and did this um, course at TAFE, which is like, a trade school I guess in a way that's I don't know if they call it TAFE in America and in the UK but either way it's, it's like a school but it's all um, you know aimed at um, trades so they had this course which was um, basically like a gives you a feeling of what the building industry was like so you did um, plastering bricklaying uh, carpentry um, I think I don't know, there wasn't any plumbing, but yeah, plastering, painting, carpentry, and just a basic idea of what, you know, those, those big trades are like in the building industry. And after I did it, I didn't like it. I, I didn't actually, um, after getting it, it was like five weeks, and after having a taste of what all those trades are like, I'm, I'm like, you know what, I don't feel as if I want to be in, in the building industry. And I, I started to get that feeling um, towards, you know, the the end of that um, course that I was doing. And on the very last day, my uncle called up my mum and I got home from trade school and my mum said, hey, your uncle's called up. There's an apprenticeship going down in Melbourne because I'd actually always wanted to move down to Melbourne, you know, like Bendigo is just like a country town and I don't know, Melbourne's just a big city and a bit more, you know, entertaining for a young guy, I guess. and. Um, yeah, my uncle called up my mum and said, hey, there's an apprenticeship as a spray painter going. If, uh, you know, I would be interested, it's mine. So my mum drove me down to Melbourne for the interview and two weeks later I started and the rest is history. So yeah, I'm really glad that that opportunity came up when it did. And it's one of those things I hadn't really thought too much about getting into the automotive industry prior to, to that. And yeah, I guess I was just lucky to have that opportunity come up um, at the time that I was sort of, you know, needing work. And yeah, I was like, I moved out of home. That I just turned 17, so I finished year 10 when I was 16 and um, just finished year 10, did that course I told you about and then moved down to Melbourne and started my apprenticeship. Just um, share, did lots of share housing back in those days. Just um, I was living in a bungalow actually, the first place. Um, and no, it was good. Yeah, so like some of the stuff that I did in the first year was um, I actually had to paint the front of the building. So when I got the job, we were working at like a smaller um, workshop and it actually ended up shutting down not long after I, I started. Now, the owner of that business had four or five other um, panel shops. It didn't matter, like I wasn't out of a job or anything, but they just moved all of us staff from 
DNR panels um, up to Baywood panels in Bayswater. Um, so when I first started, my boss made me paint the whole front of the workshop blue and yellow, um, like pretty loud colors, you know? And then, cause the, the boss boss was only leasing, um, the, the owner of the premise said, hey, I don't want this blue and yellow workshop. So yeah, within like three or four months, I had to paint the whole front of that building twice. Just by roller and brush, obviously, not spray painting, but yeah, it was pretty funny. But yeah, another thing that's like I was um, talking to Alan about, you know, like a lot of the younger people that I seem to um, work with these days getting into the trade and that, they don't really seem to want to learn polishing and some of those other you know, maybe not so glamorous tasks. A lot of the people just want to get in and just start spray painting like really early on. And, um, you know, as I was telling him, I'm like, man, when I was young and getting into this trade, you know, like you'd start off just doing general cleaning jobs, doing the lunch orders, um, prepping up new panels and stuff like that. Um, and then they'd sort of ease you into, um, you know, primer work and polishing. And yeah, the thing I was going to mention is, um, polishing like I was actually full-on excited when the, the painter said to me hey next week you know we're going to teach you polishing you know I was actually looking forward to it because I just wanted to learn um, the like the entire trade you know um, whereas it does seem that a lot of the people I guess it may have always been like this like I'm not saying that I mean this is just me compared to some of the people I, I see now um, they just sort of want to you want to do the glamorous part without all the getting your hands dirty i mean you know me spending half a day on prepping this car up man there's nothing glamorous about it really it does, it's not going to stop me from liking it but it, it's it's not glossy instagram photos of you know nice blue freshly painted um ford focuses it's it's getting your hands dirty um and it's getting in there and just getting stuff done so yeah we're gonna be able to fit something in here. Maybe, maybe not. Wires and stuff all over the place. Sometimes you can do a bit of this, get it from the outside. And fold it back into itself. Might have to do us this time. Yeah, and the other one is, um, like the way I've always treated my apprentices, like if you can't prep a panel properly and you can't mask a panel properly, um, then I'm not, not gonna let you paint it. Why would I? You know, if, if I tell you to prep a panel up and you can't pre even prep it properly, how can I trust you behind the gun? You know what I mean? Like you work your way up to, uh, yeah, if you can't prime up properly, why would I let you spray it, you know? Um, get the basics right and then, yeah, learn to walk before you run, but, does seem that some people, even the tradies, sometimes they'll just get, I think, get their apprentices in there a little bit too early, you know? up through there. Nice. Yeah, the uh, panel beater brush on sealed through here and then brought it in and yeah, just like, man, don't worry about it. Leave that for us painters. I ended up having to wipe it off because it was in the way for all our primer work and masking and that, so that's all right, we told him about it. That's another thing that one of my old bosses used to just go on and on and on about, communication, and um, that was one of the shops I worked in in Melbourne, and it just always on to us about communication, and then came here, 
and it was like a bit of a culture shock, <laughs> if you know what I mean, like just the culture of the workshop shock, you know. I'm like, man, no one talks to each other, you know, like this, people can just talk to each other and communicate a bit more. Things can run a lot smoother, you know. Um, it's just, it's <laughs> you just see people doing things and they're just thinking about themselves and not thinking about the next person in line. Um, so, yes, communicate with your fellow employees. That's my um, my advice. All right, now my tape isn't going to stick because he's he's under this wheel lot. Like, he's put um more seam sealer and tape really doesn't like sticking to fresh seam sealer. Let's see, see what we can do. It's gonna fall off, I can tell you now. Yeah, there you go, so it's not sticking. Now well. There's a bit of a hole there, we're gonna plug that one up. Might just get a bit of paper and bag it or something. Black it out later on in the morning. Well, they've actually got this job down to go tomorrow. Um, I just laughed when I, when I saw that on the board. Yeah, I can't see him fitting this up and having it polished and ready to go tomorrow. I understand people want their cars back, but they still need enough time to finish things off properly. Well, we're probably not far off ready for a bit of plastic. We're gonna have to do something snazzy in here, aren't we? We need need to mask it up, but also need to be able to get in here. So when I'm, I think we have to sort of like double mask it. Mask one piece down here, and then another one down there so that that's all open. Sometimes with masking, I was like I had this <clears throat> epiphany like I used to struggle with this kind of th thing back in the day and maybe I'd even um, spray the inside first what the hell are you doing man I hate that and then it sticks to all the post tape no we're all good get up there yeah it would make life easier having the tailgate off wouldn't it but uh, this is just uh, Stuff you gotta do sometimes. Yeah, so what I was saying before is um, I used to struggle with this kind of mask and maybe I would have um, even sprayed inside that jam first and done it the night before, but that's a lot slower. I found, and I kind of had this epiphany, you know, you just, you just gotta start, man. Just start putting bits of tape on and I don't know, it sounds really basic, but it was, to me at the time, it, it, I don't know, it just really helped me, just, just start, <laughs> just get, get you, have a bit of a plan in your head of how it's going to work out, and I don't know, it sounds, it sounds weird to actually say, but it, to me at the time, it, it really helped me out, just, just get in and start and it'll sort of fall into place. Any apprentices out there? Don't be afraid to give it a go. Just start somewhere and it should sort of fall into place. That's another handy one. You just put it up under the tire there and it's not gonna blow away. I do that a lot of the time when I'm out there in the workshop doing prime ups because it's quite a windy shop there. Get that wind blowing through and your plastic ends up all over the place if you're not careful, so smash that plastic right up under the wheel there. Stops it from blowing around. So I'm gonna get this stuff down first and that'll stop the sheet of plastic from moving around too much when I do that tailgate section. right through the guts there.
Hate that. Yeah, so for those watching at home, um, if you're doing these kind of jobs, just be careful that you got the right plastic, you know, because all, not all plastic is created equally. The plastic I use is anti-static. Well, sorry, it's actually the opposite. It's static, so all the dust will attract to it rather than the car. Um, and then, if you, this is also like coated, uh, it's got some Corona treated, that's what it says on the box, but basically it's got a coating on the outside of this that makes it so that the paint sticks to it. If you get this upside down, you start spraying and all that paint will lift off. So yeah, be careful of that one. Either that or just use a bit of paper. If, you, if you're not sure that you've got the good plastic, just use a piece of paper over the edges. This is actually how we always used to do it when I started in this trade. It was all, all everything was papered first. And you just get the piece of plastic and tuck it in or tape it down, whatever. Yeah, I mean the trade has changed a fair bit, but all the fundamentals have stayed the same. Paint some shit basically. Yeah, every time I upload a, m a masking video, I do get people saying, you know, thanks heaps. Um, I've always always seen them pick something up from your masking videos, so I guess it's those kind of comments that make me do them again. I don't I don't have to grab the, the cam, and I mean, it doesn't take much time for me to flick it on, but sometimes I'm there, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Some Someone left a comment last night saying, you know, they like my masking videos, like, yeah, I'll do another one. <clears throat> I do like to keep it nice and tight where possible, like with these kind of openings and that, so it's not flapping around too much on you, so you just do it like that, just pull it tight. It doesn't have to be super tight, but I guess it can stop little pockets and stuff like that where dust can accumulate. Even after you've started spraying, like your own overspray can pocket up in there and then maybe blow out when you're clearing. I don't know, whatever. Looks neater too. Oh yeah, what gun are you using on this one, Ganny? Woo, Black Mamba. Spray Guns Direct sent another gun out to me. I've got it yesterday. And it's the Anesta What a Supernova Black Mamba Edition, which I'll be doing a review on on my main channel very soon. But I can tell you my initial thoughts are uh, wow. <laughs> so last time when I when I got that um Lotus edition, I've got the WS, which is their conventional cap. And it's a bit of a hungry, hungry hippo. <laughs> it loves going through the clear coat. I mean, it's not terrible, you know. It's like my sort of um, benchmark is pro light when it comes to efficiency, and I'm usually running say one 
140 mils per panel depending on the size um, of clear with that pro light whereas with the WS supernova um, I found I was going up to 150 so I think it's one of those things that if you don't want a full race bra on your own car you're probably going to tip that much clear out or you're going to have it left over in the pot anyway but um, when you're spraying you know two to two to or one to three jobs a day um, I think that's the kind of thing that's going to add up you know although I don't pay for the clear I still do like to um, you know, keep it to a minimum obviously I do think of my boss I'd rather if I can save him a few bucks I will um, but yeah that's that's the point I was trying to get to was that the LS supernova which is the HVLP version actually sprays clear really nice man like really nice it's nearly un HVLP like in a way it doesn't spray like any of the other HVLPs I've used it doesn't um, leave you with that big chunky ugly orange peel I mean it can if you want it to obviously but yeah and, and it's um, definitely on par with the pro light as far as efficiency goes so it is probably running you know 130 140 mils per panel depending I actually used it. I mean I've got a conundrum I'm like man I used it for clear and base coat on this Commodore Ute I sprayed yesterday and now I'm like oh man it's, it's great for base coat it's also great for clear what do I use it as? <laughs> a, a base coat or a clear coat gun? I'm kind of like oh, I don't know it's good for both I think I'll keep going um, using it for both for a while and then I'll go back to the DB1 and I might after using it for a week I might go back to the DB1 and say nah DB1's better you know what I mean so uh, for base coat that is and then just dedicate it as a clear gun or something like that either way I guess it's just um, fun to have something different you can get bored of doing the same old things with the same old guns you know I do like changing it up Yeah, about time I swapped this out for a sharp one. It's just been running for about two months now. As lots of people have told me, it's basically just a letter opener. Yep, and that's cool, you know, I don't mind. It's great for masking. I don't know, I don't get this style letter openers. I just open them with my fingers. But yeah, obviously these are letter openers. Alright, so now this is a bit where we're going to have to do something snazzy. I can hear some U2 out there. Now, what are we doing? We need that to all come in. So basically, what I think, I'm, you can do this, a bit of this sometimes, get in here from the inside and just sort of like tape it up, like that. That. Oh yeah, that's just done the trick for sure. I might have to get another piece. How's that looking from this side? Yeah, that's got that up out of the way and then we'll put like another separate piece down here. 
as I say, sometimes you just, like I didn't exactly have this planned out in my head before I did it, but I knew what I like the end game. I knew where I wanted it, what it wanted it to look like when it was done. And as I say, mate, you just start. You just start doing it. It, sound, it does sound weird, but it's kind of what you do. So now what are we doing? That's coming down to here. We'll flick that up there to give us something to tape down to. Gotta keep it tight, you know? Now most of that, we can probably move that up there too, yep. All right, and then we just get that next piece across here and because that next piece is gonna sit like this, we've got all this room to spray. Looking pretty pro, ain't it? That's the way, man. Oh, and then it goes and sticks there and pulls it all off on you. I hate that. Wait. Okay, I'm back. The camera died. I think the battery's died. Either that or it overheated. These cameras do overheat. I found, like, when I was recording on 4K, man, they just overheat in no time. You get, like, they're lucky to get 10 minutes recording out of them. And I did, I did a bit of some 4K stuff last year and well, the general consensus from you guys and also me is <laughs> what I'm running at now is barely any worse than 4K. Like I can barely notice the difference. Anyway, so what I'm running at now resolution is 2.7K. So it's, it's close to 3K, you know. But yeah, the file size just about doubles and the amount of... Um, disk space you use up on your camera and all that increases and all that boring stuff you guys don't care you just want to know about spray painting Ugh. so because my tape's not going to stick there we're going to have to do something a little bit unusual under here but it's not the worst thing in the world because if you look under here it's actually painted it's, it's got color in there i might even squirt a bit of blue in there while i'm spraying the car there's a handy little wheel bag masking trick. Guy taught me this one years ago. Get a big piece of paper, fold it in half like that, tape to tape, and then you got yourself a wheel bag. I need to buy those fancy wheel bags they sell. There you go, that's about it. You got this little bit up here that you just, um, fold over like that and you can usually tape that down to the inside of the wheel or the tire and get it to stick. There you go, that's not going anywhere. Yeah, when possible I would obviously like to back mask off here to keep all the overspray out but you gotta do what you gotta do mate. See if the, the detailers of 
YouTube approved. What would they say about this? Oh, mate, you should have just done a touch up there and buffed it out. <laughs> You've just ruined the value of that cat. That's what they like to tell me. This is gonna work. This is gonna work just fine. Yeah, this Polad tape really isn't that orange stuff. First up, when I got it a couple of months ago, it was sticking quite well in the warmer months, but it started to cool down a bit and not quite as sticky as the 3M stuff. So it's one of those things, you know, good old trusty old 3M. It's not, it's definitely not the cheapest. It's always a bit more expensive to buy 3M, but yeah, it's just one of those quality things, I guess. It's like the sandpapers out there. The boss came in with some Nortons. I don't remember them being so bad. But I'm burning through twice the amount of sandpapers using those Norton ones. Compared to the blue stuff that we use usually. But yes, sure, you save 10 bucks on the box, but you go through twice the amount, it's actually um, more cost effective to use the better stuff. You know, and I guess it's, it's like that with the Lots of things really, you know, the tape. If, um, if we're getting overspray on every job because the tape's not sticking and all of that, or, you know, you're really saving anything by getting a cheaper tape. So when I buy things, I look for value. You know, you need the, and value does include quality as well, I guess. I don't want absolute crap, but not something that's gonna last and do the job. It's also something that's not gonna break the bank. All right, we're ready to prep so I mainly flicked that can back on just to say goodbye. <laughs> the job was just about done and dusted, but what well, the masking job was anyway. So that's us all masked up. Pretty happy with that. Hope you guys enjoyed watching and I'm going to go get the wet on wet down and I'll probably continue on with this job in the next video when we're doing our base coat and clear coat stages. Get out there and mask some shit. Gumming out. Woo!